A wise man once said, the media is the enemy of the people. Hi, my name is Ali Shwaga, and this is 10 Points to Ponder, where we like to talk about all the things that get you canceled, race, politics, Jesus, and manhood. Today, I wanna do a quick video and talk about some current events that have really been kinda bothering me lately. Specifically, the contrast in the media coverage between the Atlanta massage parlor shootings and the recent shootings that occurred in Boulder, Colorado. The media has been pushing this narrative of anti-Asian hatred. And the media thought that they had their perfect case study in the Atlanta shooting. But once things started not lining up, then all of a sudden they shifted their narrative. I was just reading an article about this from the National Review that is titled The Misleading Narrative of Anti-Asian Racism. In that article, it explains that, first of all, when we're talking about categories of people, we're talking about Asians as a broad brush. When anyone that's actually been to Asia will know that there are vast and different cultural differences. And even, even people looking vastly different depending on where they are. And there is not this one Asia. Mostly they're talking about people from India and from China, which comprise about 3 billion of the world's population. Just to put it in perspective, the article talked about in 2020 that there were 122 hate crime cases against Asian Americans. Of those 122, 28 occurred in New York, 15 in Los Angeles, and 14 occurred in Boston, which is 46% of it. In fact, if we wanna be intellectually honest and truthful, we would know that young African American men between the ages of 18 and 44 are actually 40% more likely than whites to commit hate crimes against Asian Americans. But we won't talk about that because it doesn't fit the narrative. But we know why they want it to be a national problem because then we will forget the fact that COVID, which has changed all of our lives, actually came from China. The other thing that the media did in that case that really bothered me a lot is that it seemed like they were so keyed in on this narrative of anti-Asian hatred that they didn't even want to listen to the evidence. That police um, spokesperson that said, we talked with the shooter, the 21 year old in Atlanta, and he said he felt that massage parlors were a temptation that he couldn't overcome and he was trying to eliminate this temptation. Now that's crazy, completely crazy. But the media was so keyed in on it that his assessment, his first-hand account of what the shooter said, his questioning of the shooter, did this have to do with the race of the people that were in the parlor? And getting the answer no wasn't good enough for the media because all they want to reduce things to is color. So if something is done by a white person and minorities seem to be the ones impacted, then clearly, clearly there's no other answer than it was some sort of hate crime. As they said in other articles, the perpetrator doesn't get to decide what his motive is, even after you interviewed him. Instead, we like to base things as we often do, as we did with George Floyd, upon conjecture. And we want to read in racism into things 
just based on the color of the perpetrator and the color of the so-called victim. Most of the time, we are completely wrong. Is there racism against Asians? Yes, but not the type that they want to talk about. They don't want to talk about the fact that Harvard actually changed their rules so that they could reduce the number of Asian applicants and their entry into that college because they felt that they, they had too many representatives from Asian countries. Harvard, in not upholding meritocracy, essentially woke themselves into racism. So this is a false narrative and we need to stand up against it and be aware that the media is trying to create this narrative. And the narrative is even worse given the fact that tragically in Boulder, we had another mass shooting incident. And in that case, none of the normal media coverage or none of the normal angles that you normally take in media coverage were explored at all. And why is that? I sadly think that it's because when this summer we were saying Black Lives Matter, it's almost a means of diminishing all other lives. And so because the 10 victims in the Boulder case were white and not black or minorities, then their lives apparently weren't as, um, as worthy of public outcry and outrage. Biden and, and Harris didn't come and, and touch down and, and meet with all the leaders in Boulder, Colorado, like they did in Atlanta for their show because they want to promote a certain narrative. They just chalked it up as another shooting, even though we know that at least the descent of the shooter was Syrian. He was born in Syria, I believe in 1999, and, and moved here as a toddler and has been living here ever since. No one looked into the background if there was any instance of radicalization. No one wanted to even explore that type of narrative. Instead, they just saw, well, it was white people that got killed, therefore, it's not a big deal. It's just further evidence that we need to take guns away from people. And so that's where it's gone. Uh, what I would like to say about both of these cases is that when you look at what's going on with our media coverage, they're just seeking to divide people. They're seeking to create a narrative that doesn't meet reality and then find isolated cases or situations to try to support their narrative. Those are my thoughts on it. What do you think? Do you feel the media is being divisive with their coverage of these two similar incidents? Please like, Comment, subscribe, and share this video. This has been 10 Points to Ponder.